Krishna is not only the, 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 the source of all incarnations, but he also incarnates himself into the world. Lord Narayan, however, he does not incarnate in the world. He may be the, the source of all incarnations, but he never comes in, he does not come himself into the, into the world. And Lord Krishna also has a, a very special sweetness which is not found in the pastimes of Lord Narayan. So there's a special ecstasy in the pastimes of the devotees with Lord Krishna. So 
So now Gob Kumar is asking, he wants to ask Narada Muni about deity worship. Because Gob Kumar is very attracted to deity worship. And he'd worship the deities when he was in Jagannath Puri. And he, you know, he, he understood it something very, very special. And he'd heard about the benefit of deity worship from various scriptures, different scriptures glorify the process of deity worship. But Gop Kumar has a doubt because Narada Muni had told him that the deities are just another kind of incarnation. That they're not different from other other incarnations, other avatars who come to the world. The deities are just like the uh, the avatars. Of course, they have different forms. The deities also the de deities have different forms, and, uh, and they're known for different activities. But they're all, of course, they're all spiritual. They're all full of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. So the, uh, there, there's what the, the, the deities appear, the most prominent, famous of the deities are deities like in Jagannath Puri and then also Lord Ranganath in South India where he appears, he has a very wonderful form there, deities worshipped for many, many hundreds of years. So Lord Krishna appears in these dis different deity forms just to give pleasure to his devotees. And he appears not only on the earth planet, but on other planets in 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 uh, in the pla in Bur Loka, Bur, you know, the, within this this planetary system, there are other planets, and the Lord also appears there. Some planets are higher, and some are lower. So Narada Muni wonder, uh, Gop Kumar, Gop Kumar wonders, he said, what's wrong with worshipping these forms? What's wrong with worshipping the deities? He says, Gop Kumar says, 
even if it's not may not be done properly, but just the fact that they're doing it, no matter how they do it, will bring some benefit. Even if devotees neglect other duties, but if they do the deity worship, to give up other duties to do deity worship is is nothing wrong with that. It shows that the devotee is very dedicated because they're worshipping the deity. And all when you worship the deity, all the other processes of devotional service are included there in the worship of the deity. When you worship the deity, you also chant prayers and we bow down, offer obeisances, and we're, we're, uh, we're hearing and chanting and we're remembering. All it's all there within deity worship. But Gop Kumar says, it, it, it appears from the scriptures, from the Puranas, that there are different statements about deity worship. Some statements say it's good, and some statements don't seem to, <coughs> they don't appreciate it so much. Just like in the Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, it describes if, if a person worships a deity, but if he does not behave properly to the people, then his devotion is not good. He is considered, a person like that is considered a materialistic devotee. So even you worship the deity in the temple, but if you don't behave, uh, if, you don't, if you don't recognize that the, the super soul is in the heart of every living entity, then your worship is almost you. Your worship is almost useless. So, my late father is Carl, then your worship is. Your worship will not be recognized. You will not get the, the real benefit of your worship. His worship is like, it's like offering oblations on ashes. You know when we do the fire sacrifice, we pour ghee in the fire. So if you have a, if you, if you put the ghee on ashes, then it's wasted, it's useless. You put the ghee in the fire so the, the, the ghee can be burned and offered in the fire. But if you pour the ghee onto ashes, then it's just a waste of the ghee. Uh, 
。那么，嗯，这那就是浪费了。如果把酥油浇在火上，这个火会越烧越旺；倘若浇在灰烬上，那是没有什么用的。And and there's another statement. Lord Kapila is telling his mother. He said, "If somebody may worship me very nicely in the temple, but if he doesn't understand about how I'm present in the heart of everyone, then his worship doesn't please me." So Gopkumar heard these statements from the scriptures, and he becomes a bit worried that you know, maybe devotional worship of the deities, maybe it's not so recommended. Gopakumar, he heard these statements from the scriptures, and he became a bit worried that you know, maybe devotional worship of the deities, maybe it's not so recommended. Maybe the worship of the deities is not so. Maybe there's something wrong with the deities. I don't. Gop Kumar wants Narada Muni to tell him what is actually the situation. Gop Kumar, he, uh, just said, maybe the worship of the deities is not so. Maybe there's something wrong with the deities. I don't. Gop Kumar, he, uh, just said, maybe the worship of the deities is not so. Maybe there's something wrong with the deities. I don't. So Narada Muni is an authority on deity worship, and he's written a book. He has a book about deity worship. There's a Narada Pancharatna. It's all about deity worship. So he's very happy when he hears Gopu Kumar ask this question. Narada Muni 本身他就是神像崇拜的权威，他也写了一部著作，名叫 Narada Pancharatna。So when Narada heard the question, then he stood up and he embraced Gop Kumar. He was so happy. So Narada Muni tells Gop Kumar. He said the deity forms are all equal to the original personality of Godhead. Narada Muni 就说到了，神像跟最原始的至尊人格神手是平等的。He said, "Doesn't matter if the deity is old or new." Or it may even be some concocted deity, but provided they worship the deity as th thinking that the deity is the Lord, then it's very good. Invented, but Narada Muni says if they're worshiping this form like the Lord Himself, then there's no fault in them. Even if they give up all the other duties which they were supposed to do, other maybe they had other things, other responsibilities they're supposed to do, but they neglected it to do the deity worship. There's no fault. Because they gave they gave up. The work for the service of the Lord, and that's the highest thing. Because they 
So they, they, set, they showed the highest standard, the best example to everyone. So they're, they're, they're going to get very good results from their worship. So worship of the deities is always appreciated and recognized by other Vaishnavas. Worship of the deities is very important activity in devotional service. When we talk about, just when we talk about bhakti, bhakti seva, bhakti seva means, it means service to the Lord. And that means also to the Lord who is in the deity form. So by worshipping the deity, you, come, you get perfection in your life. You can never get that kind of perfection just by doing material duties like economic development, sense gratification. <laughs> Or material religious duties. Yeah, and ritualistic activities. So Narada Muni Telescope Kumar, he said, you can get perfection even if you honor, if you, if you honor a blade of grass, even if you take a blade of grass and if you see the Lord within that grass, within the blade of grass, within the grass there's the super soul and the living entity, the jiva, and you honor that blade of grass, then that is very, that is very great devotional service. How can we honor a blade of grass? We can water it, we can bow down before it, and, and think the Lord is there within the grass. And just like when we chant the holy name, when we chant the holy name, if we understand that that name is not different from the Lord, then you can get liberation, you can get everything you desire. So there's, so there's no fault in worshipping the deity. When, when, when the Lord, when the Lord is personally there. But if the, if the devotee is remembering the Lord and he's offering his worship to the Lord, then there's no fault in that. Hmm. 
Just like when we establish the deity in the temple, when we do the, the installation ceremony and we invite the Lord to appear in the deity. So the, the wood or the stone of the deity is spiritual. Just like you have precious stones, some precious stones, they have like magical properties. So the deity is more than that. Precious, magic. precious, Ma yeah, magic. They have magic. Uh, oh, and Nangliang. Some some special stones. And you get some, you get, you get some special medicine, some kind of medicines that will can cure all kinds of disease. So material objects can do like that. So why can't the deity also do these wonderful things? So the, the Lord in the deity form, he helps us devotees, he helps us devotees to, to, to see his form by appearing in that deity form. We can meditate on the form of the Lord. And simply by coming to see the Lord, worshipping the deity form, where can, we can perform all the nine different kinds of bhakti yoga. And those who are, those who are, who are properly worshipping the deity, then they will also be very careful to respect the devotees of Krishna. But sometimes, we, sometimes because they're so absorbed in the worship of the deity, sometimes they may forget, they may mis make a mistake or do some, uh, make a little offense against that devotee. But the devotees who are offended, they won't take offense. They will, in fact, they will praise the person, they will praise the devotee that, oh, it's very nice, he's worshipping the deity. Yeah, they just praise the devotee that, oh, he's so attached to worshipping the deity, he didn't have time to come and serve me or to respect me. So, but generally, a devotee who is worshipping the deity, he'll be very careful not to offend the devotee. Materially. You'll be very careful not to offend the devotee because he's, he's very, because he's mature. He's, he's been worshipping the deity for a long time and he's very conscious 
and careful in dealing with devotees. But then you've got other people, you've got other people who may, they may invent, they may come some form and they call it, they say this is a deity, but they invented the form themselves. And they, and they may worship, but they think the deity is just simply wood or stone. They don't think the deity is eternally bliss and knowledge. They think it's just some stone statue. So they don't respect God really, they don't respect the form of the Lord, and they don't respect the devotees either. But at the same at the same time they're very proud that they're worshipping, they're doing worship, they're worshipping the Lord. They say I'm doing my puja. So these are these people are, are devotees, but they're the lowest level of devotees. So they don't get any they don't get the real result of worship. So in the scriptures, when the scriptures uh, criticize people for worshipping the deity, they're really speaking about people who are offensive, who, who worship the deity in the very wrong way. They think the deity is just simply an image of God, not actually God himself, but just some image of God, just simply some stone or some wood or some metal, not actually God. They don't understand the spiritual potency of the form of the Lord in the authorized deity form. So they don't have proper respect for the deity and they don't have proper respect for the Vaishnavas. So they go against all the te all the teachings of the Vedas, and they, so they cannot expect any good result. So sometimes in the scriptures it says deity worship is for the less intelligent. 
So in that case, it's talking about the the lower the lowest class, the lowest level of devotees who have not got any real spiritual knowledge. And they don't understand how the Lord is present in the deity and also present in the hearts of everyone. So Prahlad Maharaj, there's a nice prayer offered by Prahlad Maharaj to Lord Nishringa Dev. And Prahlad, Prahlad Maharaj is saying that actually the Lord doesn't need anything, but we get benefit by offering things to the Lord. Everything we think we own is not actually ours, it actually belongs to the Supreme Lord. But if we offer it to the Lord, then it's good for us. So, some foolish work, foolish people, some people, they're thinking the deity is just only a statue. And they think when the devotees are worshipping, they think this is just some ritual which they do. They don't understand the real mood of the devotee. So the Lord is not very eager for their kind of worship. But if we actually do the worship properly, the worship, when we worship the deity, then the results will be much greater than any kind of material, pious activity. But although it's greater, it, the, we, we, we don't... Doing devotional service to the Lord doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the, the, the material benefit which you want. If we worship the deity without faith, then naturally you won't get such good results. Only pure devotional service gives us the 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 opportunity 
to actually develop a relationship with the Lord. You have to get, we have to get Krishna's permission to enter into his abode, to go back to Godhead. We need his grace. So, if people worship the deity with very weak faith, then this is not appreciated by the by the senior devotees. Pe people worshiping the deity, they should have full faith in the deity. If they don't have faith, but they're doing the deity worship. It's not much appreciated. It's not very good. So when the scriptures, like the Puranas, when they're describing you know, when they criticize the deity worship or when they say, you know, the deity worship is not so important, then this is for people who are, are not very qualified for the deity worship, who don't have much faith. But if these people who are doing the worship, if even though they may not have much faith and they don't have much knowledge or understanding, but if they keep doing it, if, and if they never give it up, if they do it regularly and they keep doing it, then they will get purified. worship of the deity, then even though they don't have much faith, they will get the mercy of Krishna's devotees. Because it's the mercy of Krishna's devotees. The, the devotees only see the good qualities in other people. They won't see any faults. And, and the, even though the person doing the worship may have faults, gradually his faults will become Purified, though he'll, he'll give up his faults and he'll become a good devotee. So, this is the power of the deity that if you keep worshipping, you keep doing it, even though you don't know then gradually you get purified. Even though you may consider, you may think, oh, deity is just a statue or it's just metal, it's not real, but still if you keep doing it, you get purified. Uh, 
金属，一个木头，并不是把它当成神本人，那只要不断的持之以恒的去做，慢慢的就会进化。So so some devotees they have of course many of us devotees have material desires. So first they will enjoy the material results for which they desire. And then they will go on to enjoy the result of their devotional service. So devotion, pure devotion doesn't appear immediately. You get your material desires before you get pure devotion. So the pure devotees, they don't appreciate when you get your material desires. They're not very happy to see you get your sense gratification. For the pure devotees, they only think about seeing the deity, seeing the Lord, and about taking part in his pastimes. They think that is the real enjoyment. And they don't like even a moment to deviate from that. They want to own, only have that, the Lord's service and, and everything in relation to the Lord, not even deviating for a moment away from the Lord. And the Lord, the Lord has the same mood towards his devotees because the devotee is always thinking of the Lord. The Lord always thinks about the devotee. So pure devotional service is the most it, it's the highest thing. It's not so easy to obtain. You can get liberation, you can fulfill material desires easily, but you don't get pure devotion so easily. Because when you do pure devotion, then the Lord, he becomes under the control of his pure devotees. The Lord becomes, uh, he, the Lord loses his independence. He's not independent anymore. He becomes totally dependent on his devotees. So Krishna can give anything, he can give liberation, he can give ordinary pure devotion, he can give ordinary devotional service, but very rare when he gives pure devotion. And the highest level of pure devotion is prema bhakti, love of God. So that's very rare to get that. So, 
So why is it so difficult to get prema bhakti? Because Krishna becomes completely under the control of that devotee. So, taking, although Krishna is the Supreme Lord, he is totally dependent on the pure devotee who has that prema. So Narada Muni is explaining, he says, when, when, the, when the Lord comes under the control of the pure devotees, he creates, he creates a special mood where there's no fault of any kind, and there's no unhappiness. And it shows it, it shows the greatness of the Lord and his concern, his affection for his devotees. So when the Lord becomes the servant of the devotees, he becomes very, he becomes even more attractive and uh, and, and he becomes very, the devotees become more attached to the Lord than ever they were. And because the Lord has come to them and he's so close to them, the devotee becomes more, the Lord becomes more attractive and the devotee becomes more and more devoted to the Lord. The intimacy of the dealings between the Lord and the devotees is very, very special and very attractive and, and completely satisfies the mind of the devotees. Yeah, just the devotees see how the Lord is so eager to give happiness and to take care of his devotees. So sometimes where there is pure love, Prima Bhakti, very rarely there may also appear the highest level of which is called Maha Baba, which is a very special ecstasy. So, it 
the, the nature of Mahabhakti, Mahabhava, this Mahabhava, this great ecstasy, nature of it is that one, the, one it, it appears that somebody, is, the devotee, is in great distress. Yeah, because the devotee shows, he appears to be in so much pain that so the, how can the Lord tolerate seeing the, his devotee in so much pain and so much uh, distress? The Lord would never allow his pure devotees to be in so much pain. And for ordinary people, when they see a devotee in that ecstasy, then they, they laugh at the devotees. They think these people are crazy. Of course, this kind of devotion is very, very rare. It's very easy to get heavenly enjoyment, to go to heaven and get sense gratification there, that's easy. But to get prima bhakti, that's very rare. Prima bhakti is like chintamani. So chintamani stones are very rare. You hardly ever find a chintamani stone. But happiness of going to heaven is like pieces of glass. Glass is everywhere. You can get pieces of broken glass. So you can get heavenly happiness, that's easy, but to get prima bhakti, that's very difficult. So only, only very rarely does the Lord give that kind of prima. And He will give it to those who have a very strong desire to get it. And he will give it only to those who have a strong desire to achieve it. And the person who, who wants it, he has to, he, he cannot be worried about what people in the material world think. He cannot be concerned about public opinion so much. Because, because if somebody gets prima bhakti, he may appear like a madman. So people will, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll give him up. They'll think he's crazy. Mm. 
So we can't really describe these things because they're so advanced, we, we just mention it very briefly. Ordinary people, for ordinary people to understand it, it's not possible. But people who are engaged in devotional service, who are tasting something of the ecstasy, they can understand. So Narada Muni tells Gop Kumar, he said, you come from that place where this Mahabhava, Prema, where this is known, because you're from Govardhan, you're from Vrindavan, Braja and Govardhan, and there people know about these things. So Narada Muni tells Gop Kumar, he said, very soon, by the grace of the Lord, you will also know and understand this love of God and this prema and this Mahabhava. Alright, so we will stop here. Are there any questions? Well, it's the first initiation. Can we go back to Godhead with the first initiation? Yes, definitely, you can. Because chanting of the holy name, the, the first initiation means you've been initiated into chanting the holy name. By chanting the holy name, you can become qualified to go back to God. So you have to perfect your chanting of the holy name. Then the first part of the question, if we take a, accept a gift from someone, is that devotional service? Because last uh, uh, week you mentioned that uh, about uh, accepting uh, service from others. Uh -huh. So this is related to that. Okay. So what's the question? Yes? Right. Yeah. So, we accept service from others, we should also give service back to others. Somebody give service, we should repay them for that service. Yeah. 
Now somebody gives you something, if they give you some service, they give you something, if you use it in the service of Krishna, then you're giving them the greatest benefit. But if we take something and we use it for ourselves, then we have to give something back to them. No, they do get some benefit. They do get some benefit, but it will take long. Huh? Yes. Okay, so one question at a time. say they cannot get any benefit from worship, they can get benefit. But it, it may take, it will take longer, they have to, they have to maintain the worship, they have to keep doing it. By maintaining the worship, they will get purification. <laughs> and they should be encouraged to also hear. And they should hear how the Lord is present in the hearts of other living entities. And in this way they will gradually get purified and they will come to the higher level. So the prakrita, prakrita or the materialistic devotee can become an intermediate devotee. Ideally, one should be second initiated to worship the deity. And 
people who want to get second initiation, they're encouraged to study the Bhakti Shastri. And that will give them a good basis of the philosophy. And then when they worship the deity, they'll have proper knowledge what they're doing. So, of course, you may worship the deity yourself in your own home without being second initiated. So that's not real deity worship. Because you're not able to chant the proper, you're not able to chant the, the mantras. So you're, you've, not, you've not been initiated into the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra. So you're not able to recite the mantras to actually worship the deity. So some spiritual teachers compare worshipping the deity without second initiation is something like worshipping dogs or playing with dogs. Because we don't actually know, we don't understand the spiritual nature of the deity. Well, it's not recommended for people who are lack of wisdom, but it's recommended that people who lack of wisdom, they should develop wisdom. They should become learned.
Yes, generally we would understand it's according to their karma, their past lives. That we all have a particular karma, uh, different things we've done in the past, and due to these activities, we've acquired particular nature. We see, we see some people from their childhood, they're naturally artistic, they can paint, they can draw, they're very artistic, because somehow in, in previous lives they had developed this skill. Then uh, somebody else, maybe with music, they develop the skill. We see sometimes young children, they can immediately play the piano because in previous lives they'd already mastered. In, in the same way, some people are attracted to read scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, because he had an inclination in the past. However, even though one may not have had that interest in the past, they can develop it in this life if they're very determined. Yes. So, just like we heard about worshipping the deity today, that the main quality is that they should continue to worship, they should continue, keep worshipping, keep worshipping, don't stop. And by contact with the deity, they will become purified. So in the same way, if we keep reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam is also like a deity. And if you keep reading and studying Srimad Bhagavatam, even though we don't understand, then we will still become purified. Hey, 
有的奉献者大部分是崇拜神像，通过崇拜神像荣耀 Prasad 来想着 Krishna。有的奉献者大部分时间是以阅读和给别人讲述超人知识，通过这种方式想着神像，呃，想着 Krishna。各种原因没有供奉荣耀，呃，因为有原有有条件限制。他们没有供奉食物，没没有没有荣耀。我的问题是，在中国的情况下，休息奉爱、九项奉爱服务是可以根据奉献者的个体性偏好而选择的吗？长久以下来，长久下来，对奉爱到会有什么不同的影响吗？<笑>那么复杂。Yes, yes, we can. Just like a person may have a particularly strong interest to hear. So very good. You read the books and you hear. Because, because there are nine processes of bhakti, but not all nine processes are so easy to apply. Just like the two of the processes are for very, very advanced devotees. Those two are uh, surrendering everything and becoming Krishna's friend. That unless you're very advanced, you cannot do that. Processes of bhakti, but we have to begin at the beginning, and the beginning is hearing. And first we hear, and then we chant. And by hearing and chanting, then remembrance will come. So you can you can see some progression between the different levels of bhakti. So, in the bhakti's different levels, you can see that there is a stage. So we don't encourage you just to take up immediately the most elevated 
practice of trying to surrender everything or become Krishna's friend. To do service is very nice, but if you don't know why you're doing service, you won't keep doing it for very long. Therefore, we encourage, first of all, you do hearing and chanting. And gradually, after some time, you can become more familiar with the other processes. Yes. The next part of the question is that Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Good day. Uh huh. 
But they all should have some time. There must everybody has to spend some time hearing also to hear the philosophy. Otherwise, these activities just become rituals. People don't know why they're doing them. There's no consciousness of Krishna. Is that any better, Sati? Hmm. Good. Thank you, Guru Dev. Next question. Next question is from Shaiyi. Shaiyi, 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 do the service they like. Yes, yes. Well, well, we said all service to Krishna is good. It depends on the attitude that they do it with. It's not just the activity, but it's the attitude. Are they actually doing it for Krishna? So the attitude is all, always the, the important point in performing the activities. It's not just the activity alone, but it's that inner mood, that consciousness by which we're doing it. Well, <coughs> your progress will be very limited. You're only chanting the holy name. So, we don't know that, you know, chanting the holy name, you see, there are offenses to, to be avoided in chanting the holy name. And one of the offences is to disobey the order of the spiritual master. So if you're not taking any instructions from the spiritual master, 
it's not very good, not very healthy sign. Spiritual master's direction is very important for us. It, we certainly know that uh, we need to get the mercy of the spiritual master to actually get the mercy of Krishna. We cannot just go to Krishna directly. We have to go through the devotees to get Krishna. So the chanting of the holy name is being given to us by devotees. So devotees gave us a holy name, we have to uh, engage in some activities authorized by the devotees under their direction. There's a process to devotional service. The process involves taking instruction from a spiritual master. If you just chant the holy name, then you have to chant the holy name all day and all night. Don't do anything else. You cannot think, oh, I, chant six, I chanted 16 rounds, so that's enough. I don't need to do anything else. It's not enough. We have to, we cannot imitate Haridas Thakur and just sit and chant all day. So you have to get direction from a spiritual teacher. Chanting Hare Krishna, if you're chanting genuinely, sincerely, then from the heart Krishna will inspire you to seek out a spiritual teacher and to take instruction from him. Next question. Next question is from PPLU. Ding Bai Jing at the Guru Day. Chimet Ling Xing Shi Jie Li Hua Cao Shu Mu Kun Chong Pu Ren. Sai Ling Xing Shang Yo Gao Di the Chi Bian Ma. Li Kushina Wu Chong Guan Xi Chong. Guan Xi Mi Chie the so this devotee asked that are there any difference of higher and lower uh, in the uh, in the spiritual level that in the spiritual world there are flower, grass, trees and insects. 
sets, servants. Then are there any different of higher and lower in, in the spiritual sense? In the spiritual sense, there's no difference. In the spiritual world, all of these different forms of life are there, and they're all pure devotees, and they all have forms which are such at ananda, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. And they have all assumed these different forms simply to give pleasure to the Supreme Lord. Well, it appears that one is higher than another, but actually they're all equal. But uh, we have, because of our material thinking, we think one service or one relationship is higher than another, but they're all equal. Prima to go back to Godhead. Y yes. So we have to have pure devotion. That's required. Our devotion may not be on the level of Prima, it may be simply on the level of Sadhana. But if we have pure devotion, we can go to back to Godhead. Now, if we worship Krishna according to the rules and regulations, then we can only go to Vaikuntha. But if we wor worship Krishna in the mood of spontaneous love, then you may go to Goloka. Mm. 
What's the second part? We do devotional service with the motive to get, with, with the mood to get prema. Is this service pure service? We do devotional service to get prema. Yes, but we don't get prema just simply by our desire only. We need to get the mercy of Krishna. Krishna gives it, Krishna awards that prema. It's not an it's not material desire to want prema. That we have to desire. To, but you won't get it unless you desire it strongly. You have to have a very strong desire to get prema. So that desire is not material. We have to have some desire, we cannot be without desire, but we have to have pure spiritual desires, mean in relation to Krishna. Because you're second initiated doesn't mean that you're more advanced than others. We have to look at the devotion, the mood. I said the attitude is a very important thing. So just because one is second initiated, one should not become proud. But it's an opportunity to do more service. That's a good point. You brought up a good point. Thank you very much. Gurudev, 
Krishna will test us more if we get second initiation. Yes. Yes. Take more responsibility, you get more tests from Krishna. So you have to depend on Krishna. You have to surrender. Surrender means taking shelter of Krishna. Krishna, only Krishna can protect the devotee. Second part of the question? Second part is that uh, the, the test will include a disease. So, so what should I do in the future? To, what will be better for me? What should I do? Well, the, the test will in, may include disease. The disease comes in the form of pride, false ego, these things. So you should chant the holy name constantly and you should preach Krishna consciousness. That will keep us humble. That will protect us. Medicine cannot protect you. Only Krishna can protect you. If I just worship the deity, uh, pictures at home and have no deity, do I still yes. make advancement? I'm not initiated. Not initiated. Initi mm -hmm. Yes. Even though you're not initiated, you get ready for initiation. In the future you get initiated. So you're preparing for initiation. So you make advancement. No. We accept the words of the scriptures as being authoritative. 
They're not made up. We have to understand whatever is told to us, that the Puranas are history, they're not mythology. Purana means history, so these are facts. Just like Kurukshetra, there's a holy place, there's a place there called Kurukshetra. And there were five Pandavas, there were five people. These, these things are all facts, not stories. Now, sometimes he may speak something, he may say, he may give some alert, an, 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 he may give an allegorical story, just like in the fourth canto. Narada Muni is telling about Puranjan. So it's described as an allegorical pastime. So if it is, it may be mentioned, there may be particular cases where it's particularly mentioned that this is an allegorical pastime. In other words, not actually some real, there wasn't somebody like that, but there may be people like that. But Narada Muni was just giving an, a, an example to illustrate. Well, uh, you have to consider how long they do it like that. Are they, if, if, if it's regular, if they regularly worship the deity like that, 
Then the deep punk, somebody's worshipping the deity as friends and they have a very intimate relationship with the deity like that, then that's very advanced devotion. Somebody else, you're just careful about offences, so that's more Vaibhi Bhakti, but somebody else is more on the Raga Bhakti. So the Raga Bhakti is more advanced than the Vaibhi Bhakti. But to come to Raga Bhakti, you have to go through Vaidhi Bhakti. You have to first practice Vaidhi Bhakti and then you come to the stage of Raga Bhakti. You don't immediately begin at the stage of Raga Bhakti. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Because he's a pure devotee, because Krishna reveals it to him in the heart. supports everything what Krishna revealed to him, supported with scriptural evidence. Told you not. I told you before. You don't quarrel with your husband. I told you before. You don't quarrel with your husband. 
When you quarrel, then Lakshmi will not bestow blessing on you. So you have to become more humble. And you have to tolerate each other. Yes. So he uh, she uh, asked if there's no flower, fresh flower, can can she continue worship the deities? Yes. Maybe you can get some green leaves. Offer some green leaves. And if, you have, if you have no fresh flowers, then you may have to offer in your mind. Yes. Yes. She asked, uh, do they also need the blessing and mercy of Guru that they can do better deity worship? Yes. We always need the blessings of Guru and devotees for everything, not only deity worship. No, I don't know about these things. I don't know quite how the ceremony goes, what you're going to do. Just encourage you to encourage the couples to live together happily and in Krishna consciousness. And to help each other protect each other. And tell them also, if they live together peacefully, 
they will get the blessings of the goddess of fortune. All right, so we will stop here then. Bomanji Oh, okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.